Hello lads and ladies and welcome back for another video on the channel. Today we are back with some more Skybet League One content. Now on this channel we go through all the results, all the key talking points across the third tier as well as now we do the fourth tier as well. So if you're a fan of a, a League One or a League Two football club, get subscribed for all the very best Skybet League One and Two content as well. Today we're having a look at Birmingham City. Now they are a new arrival to the third tier and they've had some talking points, whether it's been their transfer activity, the style of play, the results we've been getting, mainly about the arrival of Jay Stansfield. We are going to go through it and talk about why Birmingham City aren't A, just going to get promoted this year, but are going to rise through the Football League pyramid going forward. But before we get on with this video, please drop me a like, please subscribe down below. We're very close to 16,000 subscribers now and if you are a Birmingham fan viewing this for the first time, we do League One Live every Sunday where we cover all things League One, especially Birmingham at the moment as well. You know, all the key results, the results from the weekend as well, the key talking points. Subscribe down below for more content. Now Birmingham City spent quite a while in the Premier League. Now they're a big football club. They've got a, a core of passionate supporters, like every football club have up and down the country. Now, Birmingham, after dropping out the Premier League, can find it tough. They then got to the playoff semi-final, ended up losing to Blackpool over the two legs, and West Ham ended up winning that playoff bracket. But after that, it's kind of gone downhill, a mid-table finish, and then since then, 21st in the division, and that's where I worry for them. And... Yeah, the, the, the kind of stored with a couple of 10th place finishes, 63 points both seasons. But after that, it's been downhill really for them. You look at it, a finish of 19th in the league, and then it got a bit better with a couple of 17th place finishes in there as well. You know, they've had an 18th, they've had a 20th, they've had a 19th. So realistically, since 2016-17, they've not finished any higher than 17th, and they've always finished as low as 20th. So this relegation that they got was always going to come and they're always getting in and around high 40s, low 50 point marks, but always managing to stay up. Whether that was the, there was three worst sides, whether they could just pull a string of results together at the right time or, you know, they had a bit of chaos going on at the football club. I said at the end of last season, it wasn't taken in the context that I would have liked it to have been to that Birmingham City's relegation last year was the best thing that could happen to that football club. Now, what I mean by that, you look at what it did for Sunderland, you look at what it did for Ipswich, Ports were dropping down the leagues, etc. What that gives you is a chance for the football club to reset. Birmingham City, in the last six, seven seasons, have been used to winning one in three, one in four, thinking, let's win our home games, and if we get something away from home, it's a plus. Never really being fancy. You never really think Birmingham City are going to win today. You get that maybe three or four times a season. And most of the time, they wouldn't even win those games of football. You just couldn't trust them. So they drop down a division. All of a sudden, you are favourites to win games of football. So when you are winning games of football more regularly, it becomes a great habit and then that gets supporters back involved because when you are feeling involved with a football club and the football club you support are winning matches you feel closer you feel an environment building and you are happier going to games and that will bring back supporters that maybe were on the fence about going to games because oh i'm seeing the same old same old the same old teams the same old battle after being in that division for for over a decade so i thought it's a great chance to reset New owners came in the end of like the end of the previous season and they said some interesting stuff. We're not going to be liked, but we're going to do stuff our way and we're going to stamp our authority. That was basically the message that got kind of said across. And the appointment of Wayne Rooney last year was a bit of a, a disaster. However, again, they were unlucky not to stay in the division last year. However, now they are in League One. And that is the reason I am talking about them. The appointment of Chris Davies as manager was one that didn't really raise eyebrows because he had a great coaching career. 
and was waiting for a first opportunity. And going in at Birmingham, who are a massive football club, is a big risk. However, so far, his style of play has been on the front foot, making plenty of passes. They actually lead the most accurate passes per 90, over 500 passes per game. A lot more than the next club as well. Get it down, balls down the side, get crosses into the box. Now, they have been slightly fortunate that they've been able to bring plays in for big amounts of money. You look at Williamson has come in, Hampton have come in as well. Alfie May. Now, Alfie May is a goal scorer at any level. Alfie May not only has he scored 79 goals in his last 157 games, but in his last four full seasons plus the start of this season, he's played over 200 times, 209 times to be precise. So you've got a player there that very rarely misses games of football. And when you're Birmingham City and you're spending a big amount of money on a player at this level, the context, not a big amount of money for Birmingham City for what they bring in in terms of revenue. They were, bar the parachute payments in the championship last year, they brought in the amount, most amount of money in the sponsorship, the new owners, you know, helping that come into tuition. But you've got a player there that will be regularly fit for you. They've also brought in Jay Stansfield. Now, Jay Stansfield is a player that I actually really, really like. Now, he scored 26 goals in his career so far and he got nine goals seven assists while alone at extra in 22 23 he's a player that will run the channels will get in behind that can cover out wide as well will split defenders and he's a workaholic he scored a great goal against birmingham in the cup three days later signs for them for a big amount of money look the fee has been you know rumored around on, on social media we won't go through that but he got his first two goals of the season the other day against Wrexham. Now, a lot of people would want to see that young man fail. He's only 21 years of age. Now, would want to see him flop and not want to see him score. Not because he's Jay Stansfield, because of the fee that Birmingham paid for him. And I'm really glad sitting here as a neutral that I saw Jay Stansfield score twice. Because for that young man, pressure can get to you. And what he's been through in his life as a person and as a footballer as well. I was so glad for him to hit the ground running. And I wasn't even surprised because he's a tough character. He's been through tougher times. He's been through, you know, he's had pressure on him at Fulham. Pressure on him being the main man at Exeter to keep them in the division at the time as well. Pressure on him being one of the main mans in Birmingham squad last year. He scored 13 goals last year. He got 16 goal comps for a side that went down. He scored some good goals. He scored poachers goals. He can score with a header, left foot, right foot. And getting key positions. So it's great to see that he, you know, he scored two goals with his three shots on target. I really like Paik in midfield. I think he's an excellent addition. They brought him in in January. South Korean international. Started at like the Barcelona Youth Academy as a, a youngster as well. He created the most chances and won the most fouls the other day as well. And they've got good players at the back. I, got, I like Bielik. I know he, he got a send off the other day and uh, it wasn't quite great for him. Gardner Hickman is another solid addition. You, you've got Peacock Farrell in goal, who just a couple of years ago got to the playoff semi final with Sheffield Wednesday. He's nearly at 50 appearances for Northern Ireland, just too shy of that um, as well. So they've got a great core. And so far, they drew their opening game and everyone's like, oh, Birmingham having up and running. I'll be honest with you, I thought Birmingham City would be slow developers, slow starters. Because of the new arrivals, because of the pressure, the new league, it takes time. And it took all for one game. And after that, to go away at Leighton Orient, go away at Wickham. Two hard places to go in recent years in Leagues 1 and League 2. And Wickham won the championship not too long ago, making a noise there. So Birmingham know what Wickham are about. And then to welcome Wigan and, you know, again, a last-minute goal. You've got Wright scoring a last-minute goal. Three goal contributions off the bench for Birmingham this year as well. So they can change things off the bench. Look, people go, they're only succeeding because they've got plenty of money and they're investing money into the squad. I think it's more than that. Because of the new ownership, the fans have come back on board. And the fans were always there. The fans were always turning out in good numbers. The grounds had a, a bit of a development as well. I know they are looking to potentially move out or expand the ground capacity as well. That That is on the, on the list. But the key issue is getting the supporters back on track. Because when Birmingham fans are at it, they're one of the best in the country. You know, Keep right on is my favourite you know, football anthem in this division and, you know, in the bottom divisions as well. I think it's brilliant. And, you know, Birmingham, you know, fans are excellent. And it's really good to see when supporters get back on track with the football club. Ipswich lost it. They got back on board in recent years and look what's happened to them. Now, 
Birmingham are a football club that, well, they're not just looking at this year. Their aim is to get out of this division and finish on 95 plus points. It'll be that to, you know, 106 points is the record. But realistically, is that going to be hit? I don't think so. They just want to get out of this league as soon as they can. Ports have worked vintage last year. But they got the job done. They were streetwise. This Birmingham side have quality and the streetwise as well. They've got young, good young players, but experienced players that can step up a level. And when they step up a level into the championship, from all of a sudden being mid-table mediocrity and just about staying up and going into the next season thinking, here we go again, it's going to be another long season. They're going to go into the championship with, I'm gone, a new lease of life. and We're playing these teams again but with a superior knowledge of, well, we've won games, we've won more games of football than they have in the last 12 to 18 months. So all of a sudden then things change and mentality changes and that winning mentality changes. Yes, they'll have to add a couple of players along the way. They'll have to, you know, some players will only take them so far. A bit like it that you're seeing at the moment, that they brought players in to adapt to the new level that they're at to try and keep them in the league, in the Premiership. Birmingham City have been in the Premier League. They were, they were only there kind of 10, you know, 12 years ago as well. And they, they were very close to kind of, you know, staying up a couple of you know, years as well. So Birmingham City are, are a club that as soon as they go up to the Championship, it won't be about survival and getting 50 points. It'll be about adding to that. Where can they go and finish in the Championship? Because it's a massive football club. 26, 27,000 supporters inside St Andrews the other day. The ground's been done up. They've got the sponsorship sorted there as well. They're bringing in lots of money as well. So when people are saying they're spending this amount of money, their turnover is higher than everybody else's. Their season ticket sales are through the roof. Their sponsorship are through the roof. And this football club can go all the way. They will have to add. They will have to expand. But so far on the pitch, they've scored the most goals in the division. Look, goals conceded. They are conceding a few sloppy goals per game. But that... I think will line itself out across the season. Expected goals, they're they're actually expecting you know just under seven. They scored eleven, so it's good to see that they're overachieving on that. But when you've got Alfie May, he can score a half a chance. So that expected goals all of a sudden means nothing. Passes that we've already mentioned, the top in the division. Shots on target, third in the division. So they are creating you know lots of chance under a young coach, these young players and the experienced players. And they've got a lot of players from, they've got a player from you know, Iwata from Japan. They've got the South Korean Peking midfield. They've got Alfie May, who knows this league very well as well. They've got Williamson, Hansen that have come in from different countries as well. Peacock, Frau, Northern Ireland International. So they've got lots of different players from different nationalities, different backgrounds, all blending together. And to get the right mix and to have the pressure on him, I think Davis is doing a superb job. And Birmingham City will rise through the divisions. That is it for today's video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Very club Pacific, but let me know what you think about it. We can do this again for other football clubs in this division or League Two as well. Please give me a like. Can we go for 150 likes on this one? If you're new, please subscribe. We do all League One and League Two content, especially League One, League One Live every Sunday covering all things League One. Thanks very much for watching.